Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. Making objects appear to float can be very useful in still life, food and product photography. However, achieving this in post-production can be tedious and time-consuming. This image was captured entirely in camera. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so let's start with the subject. A donut. And what I'm going to do is show you a way that you can take a picture of this and make it appear just to float. So what I'm actually going to do is support it on a rod uh, from the back of the actual donut. Therefore, from the camera's point of view, you won't be able to see the support. So for the rod, I'm using this uh, steel welding rod and I've bent the end of it into a shape so that it follows the contour of the uh, donut itself. That way, when I insert this into the donut, it'll fall around it and therefore make it more stable. There we are. So now, from your point of view, looking straight down at the donut, there is a place where you won't be able to see the rod. So now I'm just going to support this in a C stand. There we are, something like that. Let's tighten that up. OK, so with that in something like the right place, it's probably going to need adjusting, you get the idea. So from the camera's point of view, and I'm going to place the camera in front here uh, on the top of this tripod, which I'll just place in place something like that. The rod should be hidden by the subject itself. OK, so for the camera, I'm using a medium format camera with a 120mm macro lens on the front of it. Now, I've used uh, 120mm because that's going to give me some distance uh, to play with between the actual subject and the camera itself, which is a good thing in this case, I think. Uh, so for a full frame format camera, a similar uh, field of view can be achieved with something like a 70mm lens. OK, so I'll pop this on the top of here. And with that, I'll have a go at just lining up the shot. So the first thing I'm going to do is just wind that up on the column, like so. Focus that a bit, something like that. And you should be able to see that the support is visible behind the subject. But if I just lower that a little, now the support has fully disappeared. There we go. And we'll go for a rough focus at this stage, something like that. Right, so having initially lined all that up, next thing to do would be to tether the camera into Capture One software so that you can follow along and see the results as I get them. There we are, it's all on now, uh, and you can see the settings that I have on the camera on the software at the moment. So it's in full manual mode. At the moment I have a shutter speed set of 1 50th of a second. Uh, so I'm just going to take that up to the flash sync speed for that camera, which is 1 125th of a second. That's the flash sync speed for the focal plane shutter in this camera. So after that, uh, I have ISO 100, and at the moment I've got an aperture set of f8. So just with those settings, what I'm going to do is just grab an image uh, just with the house lights, just to make sure that they don't influence the picture at all. OK, so you can see in there that there is a slight ghost of an image, but nothing too serious, nothing that's going to affect the final result. So with that out of the way, uh, I can think about how I want to light this. So this is going to be lit, I think, um, predominantly from above, but I want to light it in such a way that it brings out the texture of all the sugar on the top of the, uh, the donut that I've got here. So in order to do that, I'm going to use 
virtually a, a bare flash. So this is the flash that I'll be using on this C-stand and I have on the top of this C-stand uh, the flash head and a zoom reflector. So what I'm going to do is place this about there. Now at this sort of distance this is going to act uh, a little bit like a softbox but it'll still have a crisp result, probably. Anyway, we'll just have a go to set the exposure. So just at an arbitrary energy level, I'll grab an image and we'll see what we get. OK, so that's obviously very burnt out. So I need at least three stops of energy um, off that, I think. So what I'll do is I'll just use the flash sync trigger, which is built into the camera, just to take three stops of energy out. One, two, three. There we go. And with that, I'll just grab that again. Yes, that's a bit better. We'll just zoom all the way in and have a look at the result we're getting. Yes, you can see that this is actually quite crisp. We're getting a nice result but the depth of field isn't really very big. So what I'm going to do is adjust the aperture to give me a bigger depth of field. Now at the moment I have f8, so what I'm going to choose is something like f16. And we'll see what difference that makes. Now that's a two stop change, so I'm going to need to add on two of the stops that I've just taken off just to make the exposure the same. So, having done that, I'll grab that again and we'll see what we get now. There we are. That seems to have made it all a bit more crisp. So, this is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. OK, so far so good. So, it's starting to uh, come together. But you can see in the image here that we still have the bits of the support in the background. So I want to get rid of that. And the way to do that is just to put a flag in at the back here just to cover up all of this. So here we are. This is my flag on a C stand. And I can just adjust that until it's right up against the steel rod. Put the other half down. There we are. So with all that in place, uh, I'll just grab another image and that should make this stand and the other bits that you can see in the picture here uh, disappear. There we go. OK, so now it's just time to do a little bit of fine tuning. I think overall the exposure is possibly still a little high, so I'd like to take another stop of energy out. And also, um, I'm not actually getting anything around this side. It needs a bit of fill-in. So to do the fill-in, I'm going to use uh, a card flag, uh, which is just in this retort stand. I'm just going to place this on this side, something like this, hopefully out of view of the camera, uh, just to recycle some of this light back onto the subject. So with that in place and a stop off, let's grab it again. Yes, I think that has improved it quite a lot. This is what we had before. This is what we've got now. So it's just brought up all this. We still need something at the very bottom, I think. So again, I'll just use another piece of card and we'll just try and bounce a bit more light in and see what happens. I'll just hold it for now. There we go that's possibly a little too much, so I need to take it back a bit. So I'll just put it on the table like that. I'll try that again. Yes, that's a bit better. This is what I had before. That's when I held it close in. And this is what I've got now. I think I want to be a little more, so in order to uh, just increase the effectiveness of this, I'm just going to place it on a couple of pieces of wood just to raise it up ever so slightly and see what happens now. OK. Yes, that's better. 
So this is what we had with no fill-in, and this is what I've got now. Good. So that's the base image. What I need to do now is just add a little dynamic element to it. So what I'm going to do is just dust this with some uh, icing sugar. Uh, and at the same time, I'll grab an image and hopefully we'll capture the icing sugar landing on the donut. There we are. That's the sort of thing I want. So there's a bit of trial and error in this. There we are. So that's it. We've captured the fully floating donut, and I think adding the dynamic element of the icing sugar has lifted the whole image and just goes to prove what you can actually do all in camera. So there we have it. Now I hope you like watching how I made this sort of thing, and if you like watching that, then do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.